It's the KSO Show, our Wednesday podcast covering Kansas State football season, and we get into the important matchups of the the this week, I guess, with the Kansas State Wildcats hosting Nevada, both programs 2-0. I'm Derek Young, joined by Graham Flanders. And I, I guess I, I one of the most important matches I think is actually not on Kansas State's offense, though we're going to have to touch on that because obviously Will Howard will start this week against the Wolfpack. But I think it's really how you contain and, and maybe disrupt Carson Strong, who is, you know, according to some folks that cover the NFL draft, projected to perhaps be the top, maybe even the top pick in the NFL draft, number one overall. So that's a tall task for the Wildcats defense. They definitely didn't face any one of that caliber yet, not not with Stanford or with Southern Illinois. Um, though Tanner McKee for Stanford certainly looked good against USC last week, which is an interesting mm-hmm. little factoid. But I think it's, you know, how much pressure can this defensive line really produce and make Carson Strong uh, uncomfortable in the pocket? That's going to be the most key. And by what the defensive line has done through two games, it seems like this might be the game where they could really feast in an offense that's going to sling it more than run it. And uh, Carson Strong... As good as he is, there's times he might get too comfortable in the pocket after two really solid games from him, and possibly you could see a couple of Felix Anadike or Duke or uh, Horn, or you could see some sacks by the the defensive line up front. That is going to be the key, um, as well as this will be the toughest task for the secondary all season long. Yeah, absolutely. Carson Strong is going to be maybe the best quarterback that the Wildcats play all year. Spencer Rattler would probably disagree, but those – Probably are the two that jump off the table, um, at least immediately. And, and I think, you know, if there's one maybe phase of the game where Carson Strong could be vulnerable is is maybe if you can produce enough of a pass rush that he is a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, I guess easier to corral because he's not the most mobile quarterback in the world. Now, he is a big and strong dude, so it might be yeah. tough to tackle him in general. But in terms of him getting away from you, not the most mobility in the world. Southern Illinois quarterback Nick Baker probably yep. was even a little bit more elusive in that regard. Um, probably more like the Stanford quarterbacks. I'm not saying he's a statue, but he's certainly not a dual threat of any kind. So if you do produce enough pass rush, you can get home because he's not – you know, necessarily going to get away all that often. Not the, the most athletic guy. Um, when you talk to the Kansas State players, you know, or, or, or head coach Chris Klein, I mean, the two traits that they say where he's completely excellent at at this point of his career is, you know, you're not going to fool him. Very smart player. He can really diagnose pre-snap. If you're going to try to disguise defenses and blitzes on him, you're probably not going to be successful because he's probably going to detect what you're always trying to do. And, yeah. of course, his, his arm strength is up there – with the best of them in college football, and that's why he's projected to perhaps be a first-round draft pick. But you got to like it if you're Kansas State because Nevada's offensive line is not the most most effective group in the world at this Mm -hmm. point in time. And and Kansas State's really been effective with their pass rush thanks to Khalid Duke, Felix Anadike, and even Nate Matlack got into the – uh, got into the mix uh, last Saturday. It's funny because Boo Massey has been really quiet out of that group, but he's still the fourth in line to, you know, be a guy that can make some plays in that that room. That's why I had to ask Kleiman, is that one of the best rooms he's seen? And I think by the end of the season, he will be saying that because that's how good this, uh, especially NUDK and Duke could be the, just this season and Matlack coming in behind them. But that is going to be the key is getting behind that offensive line, um, and if their offensive line wakes up and is solid, that could mean bad news for K-State because I do think the secondary is somewhat still trying to get comfortable. Uh, Julius Brents as well hasn't played his best football for K-State yet, and that's that's an area where I think if the offensive line is good, then it's going to be more time for Carson Strong. I do believe there's going to be three solid receivers for Nevada that are going to be trying to get open, and then can this very effective defensive line continue probably the toughest matchup for Nevada's offensive line all year so can this defensive line uh, make that so and really dominate and be back there affecting Carson Strong yeah and I think Eka Boydell probably needs to step his game Absolutely. up just, just a hair more as well well if it was more of a, than a hair it would be really good news for Wildcats offensively I th- you know we'll probably touch on it more in the game preview on Friday but I think I don't know if there's one matchup where 
I mean, you'd, you'd like to think that your offensive line can control in the trenches, but I think it really com- it's not necessarily a matchup. Maybe it's Will Howard versus secondary that I'm referring to, but just to ca- take care of the football. Absolutely. That's that's the most important part, and that's all they have to do because I think this defense will give them the opportunities to win this game if, they can, if Will Howard can just be a game manager, which we did not see last week, obviously. But different circumstances this week. He's not getting thrust into the second quarter, midway through the second quarter of a game. He's getting full practice reps. All the hype in the world from his, his coaches from the offseason. And really, this is the deciding factor for Will Howard, deciding game for Will Howard of whether or not he can truly be uh, the future for Kansas State. Is he going to make the, the, the actual right smart plays, throw it away when there's no one open, or go through your progressions, find someone that is, might be open downfield? But the most important thing is just do not turn it over. Even if you miss some guys downfield, you can get away with that as long as you can sneak away with a win. Yeah, he's got to miss the right way. Got got to be able to live another day, five another day. Sometimes it's not terrible just to take a sack if it means not fumbling, if it means not not getting intercepted. Um, And and you did mention the the progressions, and that's more like locking in on one guy can Mm kind of get you in trouble. I think he likes to hunt for Deuce Vaughn a little bit too much at times. Um, even when it isn't there. And, and that's an easy thing for to get into that trap because it worked for him last year when he did find Deuce Vaughn in the middle of the field. But it's too many weapons this year to be doing that. Yeah, though. yeah, and the defenses are kind of sitting on it at this point. But yep. it, And we'll see what happens. You know, if he runs into the same problems early on in the game that he did last week, it'll be interesting to see what how the coaching staff responds if they stick with him or not. But the, those are probably the two two big things, you know, yeah. to look forward to matchup-wise entering Saturday's tilt with Nevada. Uh, for Grand Flanders, I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show. Tell your, your friends. friends. Tell them. Tell them I told you. Subscribe.